Cooks have been using food mills for years to mash, puree, or strain their food. They're a great alternative over a food processor or a blender because they so effectively remove the seed, the skin, or any fibrous parts of your vegetable or fruit, and they also offer you a greater control over your texture. The AllClad stainless steel food mill has a lot of great features, starting with these three discs, fine, medium, and coarse. Each of the perforations on the disc have a raised edge. It catches the food so much better than traditional food mills, making for much more effective milling. Let me show you how to assemble the mill and then we'll get started making some recipes. I'm gonna use the fine disc. I simply place it on the stem. And here's another really great unique feature. This is the wiper bar. And this goes on the bottom right here. And as you're milling your food, this rotates around and releases the food from the disc makes for very efficient milling. So the final step for assembly is to insert this into the bowl. And it helps if you put a little pressure on the bar and the little teeth grab our spring-loaded system. And there you have it. That noise you hear is this rotating blade making contact with our disc, and that's a good thing. That means that all of your food is being very efficiently pushed down through the perforation holes. Chef Thomas Keller worked with William Sonoma and Allclad to develop recipes that come in a booklet with the food mill. Today I'd like to show you the milling portion of those recipes. Food mills are really great for making vegetable purees. Today I've got some Yukon Gold potatoes and roasted garlic. I'm gonna make a nice puree out of them using the fine disc inside my food mill. I'm gonna move over the pot that I cooked the potatoes in onto a kitchen towel that keeps it from slipping and sliding around the counter. Place the food mill on top, and this is why I love these non-skid feet. It grips the edge of the bowl really sturdy. And let's put some potatoes and garlic inside. This food mill has the largest capacity on the market. Almost three quarts of food fit inside, but you don't want to overcrowd it. So you may have to do some dishes in a couple batches. And it's as easy as just turning the top. If for whatever reason you find that your food gets stuck inside the food mill, a great trick is to go the opposite direction. It kind of loosens everything up and then you can spin it around again. Another great feature of this food mill is this ball on top. It spins in all directions. It's really easy on the wrist and makes for easy spinning too. Now this fine disc is really great for making, of course, delicate vegetable purees like this one. Also baby food. Really great for making homemade baby food. If you're interested in making a mashed potato, you could always use the coarse disc. You can even leave the skins on the potato and the food mill will separate the potato from the skin. Let me put in some more potatoes and finish off this potato garlic puree. For roasted tomato sauce, I'm going to use the medium disc. These tomatoes and garlic have been roasted in the oven. I'm gonna add about half of them to my mill and give it a spin. This medium disc is great for making vegetable soups, hummus even. Let's add that second half. And the great thing about using the food mill for making tomato sauce is that it separates the flesh of the tomato from the skins. The skins will stay behind and we'll just be left with the flesh in our pot. So what you can see inside my food mill, what's left over all those tomato skins. We're gonna let those stay behind. But down below, we have all this rich, delicious tomato sauce. The food mill's coarse disc is great for making soups or applesauce or mashed potatoes. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make spetzel using my food mill. I already have some dough, some herb spetzel dough. I'm gonna put about half of it in the food mill. And the idea is to force little droplets of dough into hot water to create tiny little dumplings. So I'm gonna turn my food mill a little slower than I would normally. You don't wanna to go too fast because you don't wanna create really small drops. 
And let me lift it up so you can see exactly what I'm doing. You can see the little pieces of dough coming out the bottom of the coarse disc, hitting the hot water, floating to the surface. For this recipe, I've taken the wiper bar off the bottom of the food mill so I can just let the spetzel dough drop into the water naturally without being cut. The All Cloud Stainless Steel Food Mill has a lot of great user-friendly updates over traditional food mills and you'll probably find you use it year-round from spring pea soups to fall butternut squash purees.